Ah, uh, Bravely Default. The game touted oh so frequently as a better Final Fantasy than Final Fantasy. If that is truly the case, then it seems the bar for what counts as such a thing is a low bar indeed. But I'll get to that later. There's a bit of timing involved in doing this video for two reasons. One, this is something that was been bugging me that I needed to get out of my system for several months, much like my last video. Two, my main problem with this game and my main problem with D&D 5th Edition are quite similar. It's often the case with fan bases of a long-running series where change is not going to be accepted readily, especially when that change goes into an area that is outside the comfort zone or what they consider good. As a result, a lot of the old versus new arguments within a franchise can be summed up as everything was fine and dandy until blank came along and screwed everything up. In rare cases, this is somewhat justified, for instance, Matt Ward's work on Warhammer 40k, but more often than not, the quality of the changes is irrelevant. The primary sin in said fan's case is that the change happened, and the further the franchise goes in the direction of that change, the greater the schism happens. As a side effect of this, the work that promises a return to tradition is embraced and praised, often at the expense of newer works, again, quality be damned. If I were to sum up Bravely Default's mechanical problems in one word, it would be confused. The game can't quite figure out if it wants to do its own thing or be a throwback, and it isn't willing to embrace either side. On one hand, it wants to be a nod to the good old days of SNES era Final Fantasy specifically, and console RPGs in general. But it utilizes things that have not aged well in those games. Much of the gameplay design and advancement is using those old tricks verbatim without examining if they even work, or if they even worked at all. And yet, every single issue that I had could have been easily fixed. Unfortunately, each of the fixes that I could come up with I had to quash because that would break the nostalgia vibe that the game is going for. That's what frustrated me. The fact that they are seemingly forced into doing it this way because even a single break would turn it away from the retro vibe they want to go for, and breaking that would make the nostalgia-addicted fans cry foul. Which brings me to the real source of my annoyance with this game in the context of its fandom response. The praise is centered around it being a throwback, full stop. Whether it is a good game or not doesn't matter, just as long as it's like something from someone's nostalgia. Granted, I enjoy a nostalgia trip as much as the next guy, but I have a problem when said nostalgia is used as a stamp of quality on a game, or even worse, when the presence of said nostalgia is used to brush away any legitimate criticism the game may have had. It's like the based on a true story kind of crap that Oscar bait movies pull every year. Tying back to the change remark I made earlier, I often see this game being held up as a paragon at the expense of whichever modern Final Fantasy the arguer happens to not like, usually being Lightning Returns because those games came out around the same time under the blanket term of modern. Putting aside how petty it is to need to push down another game to raise up the one that you like, this approach is ultimately no different from that one guy who insists on listening only to music from the 70s and can't stand all of this modern crap. Both are making the same argument. It's different from what I like and am familiar with, and therefore it's bad. Moreover, I detest nostalgia being utilized as a measure of quality. It's an emotional response, and as such cannot be measured objectively. When one person finds nostalgic, another person won't. It reduces the current work to an avatar of that feeling, as if making a good game doesn't matter in the face of it being like something familiar. That's the tale of Bravely Default. It's the video game equivalent of an exploitation film. Granted, when I say that I don't mean the violence and tits that you'd expect out of Roger Corman, I mean in the sense that it sells itself on being like the romanticized view of the past people have, and little else. The game does not sell itself on its mechanics, its narrative, or its world. Everything is subordinate to being like that familiar security blanket I've mentioned several times in this video. It fits this ill-defined image of what a classic console-style RPG should be like, and is content to ride on the coattails of past games, which may not have aged well in reality as people's rose-colored glasses seem to think. It is at times like these that I recall a certain quote from John Wick, which can be paraphrased as, we cast our memories in a romantic light, and all good husbands know that shadows do a great job of hiding love handles. As a final note, since I like to recommend something positive if I'm going to talk about something negative, I will point you into the direction of a Steam game called Last Dream. Granted, this game uses the RPG Maker engine, but I think it does the throwback while doing its own thing a lot better than Bravely Default does. Check it out if you get the chance. With that said, good night, everybody.